Well, hello, boys and girls. Welcome to the Ghost of Kiev build part two. It's the ICM 172 scale kit of the MiG-29 and um, they re-released it in a Ghost of Kiev version. They also provide the paint set with all the colors needed. These are uh, ICM acrylic paints. I haven't used them before in any type of way. So I was also very curious, not only about uh, those digital camel um, decals, which come with the kit, but also to use and try out those paints. Now, um, we did part one, which was about building it and um, priming, pre-shading, marbling, and painting the lower surface of the model. And I will link the video up here. Um, please go over there, check it out as well, so you have the entire picture of um, what this kit is like. So um, now in part two, it's really time to finish the entire build really. So that means um, all the painting, the weathering, the final assembly, painting the exhaust nozzles and so on and so on. And of course, yes, it includes um, placing the decals, those really cool crazy digital camo decals, um, which are quite tricky to apply at some places. You'll see it in the video, especially one. One decal is really big and it's quite tough to apply it without destroying it. Because I did this build together with Acho's Props, a fellow Swiss scale modeler I know of Instagram. And um, actually while chatting, we found out that we live quite nearby. What a coincidence. Anyway, we did this build together because him and me, we bought the kit more or less at the same time, just when it came out. When it came out, we both bought the kit and he suggested, why not do a body build? So please head over to Instagram, check his account, at Joe's Props. He did also a very, very fine version of the MiG-29 Ghost of Kiev. So I packed a lot of steps here in this video. And in the end, we will also have a look at the finished build. I don't want to make the video too long, so this is not, uh, I don't I don't have a long section with the finished build, but you can also check my Instagram or Twitter account and there uh, I posted a lot of pictures already and I will post some more, don't worry. So without any further ado, here's the Ghost of Kiev build part two. So off-white for the upper surface, the ICM acrylics, I thinned it down with airbrush thinner of Vallejo and their flow improver. As always, I'm starting with some small parts and not directly on the model itself, just, you know, to feel the flow of the paint, to see how the airbrush is behaving. And then I started um, to lay over a, a mist, a, a mist of paint over the entire model, let it dry. This dries very quickly because it's a very, very thin coat. And then I started to apply the color in the panels. Leave the panel line, don't cross the panel lines, just slowly, carefully fade into the black lines. Uh, yeah, and I did the nose already, it was a simple uh, masking job. I also used um, paints from the ICM acrylic paint set. Here I'm using the steel color to paint those, um, those parts of the exhausts which are um, attached to the model itself, to the whole body. And I used aluminum as well to have a color variation there. After that it was time to seal everything with the gloss coat and prepare the surface for the decals. Now I didn't do this properly, meanwhile I know exactly how to apply a gloss coat but at that time, I wasn't sure, so I was facing some problems. So I applied the gloss coat. Once now that has dried and I want to start with the decals, I realized that the surface is way too rough. It's even, it's more rough than, than a flat coat actually. Now I thought I'd just try to use the sanding sponge of Tomia with 3000 grit cut a little piece out and and you know gently sand over the surface and the result the result is a very smooth surface just after a bit just rubbing this sponge over the surface 
don't apply a lot of pressure, just as much pressure that I can move it and control it around, you know. Now I want to try and show it to the camera. The surface here is smooth. Now this surface here, I have it. Now the other side, you hear, you even hear it. Smooth. Rough. Great, great sh Okay, I'll continue and um, do this sponging all over the place and then I can start with the decals. So I'm gonna show you uh, my procedure. I start with the X1, X1, X1 mix. That's one third setter, one third softer and one third water. I always apply this before I lay down the decal, okay? Then gently mold it into the surface It's a good example there because this, there's a quite an edge there. After that, I reapplied some uh, of the X1, X1, X1 mix. I cleaned up all the excess and then I applied Revel's Decal Soft. Now here you can see a lot of bubbles. On the wing, the decals have settled very beautiful. So these bubbles are not a problem, not at all. They will completely disappear. I just apply a few layers of Revel's Decal Soft over it, let it dry overnight, and after that, they will completely disappear. It's time for the big mama here. That's a one-piece decal, which will have to be placed here, okay, on top of everything. So now I got a lot of practice with all the uh, camo pixel decals I already applied and now it's time for the big mama, okay? Now there was a trick, I don't remember the trick, but I'm just gonna try this. this in water completely okay leave it there for a moment Oof. okay put this here I gotta leave this quite a while gotta leave it quite a while bro okay just checking yeah it's kind of moving but very slowly so yeah I was I went extra careful with this one I really uh, gave it enough time because if this big decal is still sticking somewhere on the paper you will tear it apart because those digital camo uh, decals they are very thin they are very thin and you really have to watch out first I try to um, slide it down from top uh, it didn't went that very well, so I decided to do it from the side and just carefully lay it over. You can see here how thin these decals are. They are really extra thin, so you have to be extra careful. But if you manage it, the result will be lovely. I did brush it on and I did the same procedure as I did with the previous decal. And one step I didn't show you is after it has completely dried, I also, um, you know, brush over it with a completely dry brush. There's nothing on this brush, just a dry brush. This is the result after it has completely dried. And like, I don't know, 72 hours or something, or even more, four days. There are no more bubbles visible. So the bubbles went away and it was time to play around a bit with the weathering. 
Now I didn't uh, plan to do a lot of weathering on this MiG-29. It's not like an old World War II aircraft. Um, so I just played around a bit. Here I'm using the uh, ammo MiG Inamel filters. You just have to damp your brush when you use them. Make sure the brush is not like dripping wet. What you have to do is to shake them all the time, like not all the time, but you have to shake them from time to time because they have like these kind of pigments. And if you leave it in the bottle, those pigments will sink down to the, to the bottom and you won't be having any effect. You just keep on applying and you won't be having anything visible. So make sure that you always shake them a bit before you apply. Now here I'm using the dry brush paint dry brushing the edges I'm showing you how it looks on this type of fin of the um, vertical stabilizer you know, dry brushing the edges is like a very simple technique with a great, great impact. Now, this is a magical moment, as always, when you apply the panel line washes and they keep flowing within the panel lines. I don't know why, but this is just so satisfying. It's a very satisfying step. And again here, it's a simple thing to do once you have a bit practice and the impact on the model is very big. These enamel uh, panel line washes, you have to let them dry. You can let them dry for quite a while. It's better actually. They will settle really nicely. If you lay down a proper gloss coat, you can clean the excess also 24 hours after applying. You can still clean it with a Q-tip. Now it was time to slice the decals alongside the panel lines to make it uh, look much more real. And uh, yeah, you have to be careful. Don't apply a lot of pressure. Just let the panel line uh, guide the knife. You don't have to do much, just trust the panel line, okay? So, time for some more dry brushing and meanwhile I was working on the exhaust nozzles. After I um, gloss black base primed them, I used the same dry brush technique to actually paint the exhaust nozzles. Just don't paint it, you have to yeah, just do this stipple movement and stipple your way through. That's a start, that's a start. I'm using chipping color with this exact same technique. Meanwhile, the exhaust nozzles were drying. I did the gloss coat on the model. Okay, super. 
Yeah, everybody loves this uh, this special blue Swiss chocolate. Some more dry brushing on the exhaust nozzles. Um, I just wanted to highlight all the edges. That looks very nice already. I was really happy with that. Now I did a little experiment, just a small one for the bottom of the exhaust nozzles because I saw this in reference photos that this has this kind of color like some kind of a, a very bright beige at the bottom of the exhaust nozzles. Can't really spot it here in the camera because the light and everything reflects a bit but I also did just, just a slight a slight effect. Now I thought I'd just use the Weathering Master of Tamiya to apply some uh, burnt blue and burnt red effects. What I did here is just apply it, wipe away the excess, use the brush from time to time, Apply some more, because it disappeared too much. I wasn't exactly happy of course and I went over it again. Look mm -hmm. door in me. Now what's that to be? It's super. Yeah. Bobby. This is the top, yeah. Mommy, Bobby. Hmm. I need to get out of here. I need to get out of here. I need to get out of And not the whole slim. For me, flat. A little for me. For me. And ox. And ox, lean, lean knot, mm -hmm. puppy. Yeah. Uh, and do me uh, the skips. Then, then time for the all of skips. Then time for the all of. How do you know? How do you know it's up? The guy all comes when This is always uh, not really an exciting moment, but a very tense moment uh, for me, because I never know what is underneath the masking. Is it the clear canopy there? Does it has some blurs? Did anything happen during the paint job which was not planned? Or is everything okay? Everything was okay. Here I'm just cleaning a bit to get rid of the residue of the tape. Now this is scale modeling at its finest. I'm trying to dry fit this, <laughs> this uh, very small clear part. And um, I always had it the wrong way, always had it the wrong way. And once I did it, I had to take it away again to apply the glue because I was only dry fitting it. I was only dry fitting it. You just try to handle this very small part, but you always apply it the wrong way around. Now time for the rockets and this is the moment, this is the moment where she stands on her own feet, on her own three feet for the first time. I'm checking if everything is aligned, you know the wheels and the rockets of course. Uh, this model, uh, so this kit has a lot of uh, small parts here. 
at the lower surface. Uh, landing gear, it, it, several parts, all these rockets. So there are more details actually on the lower surface than on the upper surface. Well, this is the finishing, the finishing moves here. Just paint the last parts. You heard that? They're coming. Ja, das ist ja nur eine Frage von der Zeit gewesen, ja? Ich habe ihn nicht mehr. Ich habe ihn nicht mehr. Ich habe ihn nicht mehr. Nein. Now the final moment. This is the antenna. Put it in place. And voila. That's it. <lacht> Thank you.